Hey guys, this is John Farr from Standard Tutoring, and uh, welcome to part two of Stator Chemistry. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, chirality, and then going onward to a good explanation of isomers, comparing structural and stereoisomers. So chirality, um, to understand chirality and achirality, this is in reference to a stereocyte. So I've written here this basic table that outlines the difference between chiral and achiral sites. So let's just go through it. With chiral sites, you're looking at an asymmetric carbon, so four different paths, something like this. Every atom or path from that little carbon is different, and so we can prioritize and rank them and then find the stereochemical designation, R or S. With an uh, achiral site, there is symmetry, okay? Not all of these are four different paths, this could be an H here instead of an OH, and so there's some level of, um, not being four paths, some level of symmetry. And this also applies to uh, carbon double bonds and obviously substituted rings. Going onward, chiral sites have optical activity. It's because of those four different paths. With eight chiral sites, there is no optical activity. Lastly, there are different mirror images with chiral sites, like we have here. And we have another asymmetric tetrahedral carbon. If we have a plane of symmetry here, we can reflect that carbon over to find the mirror image of it. And so we have two actually different configurations, the R and the S. And if we actually we prioritize them and then evaluate that, like the last video, we see that this really is R. We're going this way clockwise, and our 4 is behind the board, so it's R. We're going this way counterclockwise, 4 is behind the board, so it's S. So just keep in mind that with a plane of symmetry, like you're reflecting it over the mirror, you have different mirror images with a chiral site. And that's due to this chiral carbon having four different paths. You can't do that with a chiral sites. They're the same mirror images, so there's no enantiomers. Enantiomer is a term to say that there are non-superimposable mirror images. Going onward, I have written down stereocyte rules here. Remember, the stereocyte is that special site that I designate that as a stereoisomer, that there are different uh, options for configurations there. So our first rule here is that really the symmetric center is a, if there's a symmetric center, it is a chiral, and if there's an asymmetric, it is chiral. So that's kind of counterintuitive, but just remember that a chirality Go correlates with a symmetric center, asymmetric center correlates with chirality. Okay, like in here we had an asymmetric center, it's under the chiral category. Our second rule is the number of stereoisomers, you can find that by doing the rule 2 to the n, where n is the number of stereocytes. So if there's a big molecule that has n number of sites in there, you know you have like three asymmetric tetrahedral carbon sites, then if you just do 2 to the n, 2 to the 3, then you'll find the number of stereocytes. So whenever you get this kind of uh, big molecule, you find the number of, uh, number of sites that are n. You can just do the math to find the number of stereoisomers. Did someone so, just say do the math? Yeah. Oh wait, I heard someone just say math is difficult. FFS to the rescue. All right, going onward from stereocytes, I've written down the rule here, just a phrase, only in describing the relationships can you use certain terms. So I mentioned enantiomers earlier on here, and there are two sort of uh, designations when you're talking about stereoisomers, enantiomers and diastereomers. Enantiomers refer to these mere images of each other. They're completely opposite. So if there's a chiral site, if it's R, then the complete opposite is the S, so they're enantiomers of each other. So remember, only in describing the relationships can you use those terms. You can't say something that's just an enantiomer. It's the enantiomer pair. There's always two involved. They're an enantiomer of each other. So this is important for going through isomers like this. All right, if we're going to contrast structural and stereoisomers, we need to know um, certain rules and like what they apply to, right? So with structural isomers, you have different connectivities. While you do have the same formula, the connectivity is different. In that sense, you have a completely different name and different molecules. So in part one, I made the rule that if you have a different name, you have a different molecule. That holds true with structural and stereoisomers. So keep that in mind. Different connectivity, different name, different molecules. Basic, right? With stereoisomers, you have that same connectivity, you have the same main name. The only difference is that change in uh, configurations, change in uh, how they're aligned in space there. So you have different molecules. While you do have that same main IUPAC name, if something is wedged, something is dashed, if you have a you know, stereo center there, then you're going to have a different configuration of space. You're going to actually have different molecules because they are slightly different. So if we're looking at this molecule here, let's start, this is our reference point, this molecule. I'm going to go through and explain the relationship rule and also using the 2N rule here. So if we start with this molecule, we have two uh, sites here, two stereocytes. This carbon here has four different paths, same with this carbon here. So we can use the 2N of the rule to find the number of total stereoisomers. We have N stereocytes, we have two stereocytes, 
So 2 squared is 4. There's a total of 4 stereoisomers. Now we can go through and assign what are actually going to be enantiomers and diastereomers. So this is our reference point. We can assign the stereochemical designations to the two carbons here. Turns out this is S and this is R. If you need a refresher on how to uh, prioritize them and how to name them S or R, check the previous video. But quickly, this is our first priority here because it's a, it gives you the highest atomic number. So this is one. The web, the dash there is the hydrogen, right? So that's going to be four. And then the second priority is this way. Third priority is this way. So you are going one, two, three. You're going counterclockwise. And this is behind. So it's S. All right? But again, quick refresher can be found in part one here. So if we have S and we have R, if we do the complete opposite of that and find the enantiomer, then it's going to be R, S. These are enantiomers of each other. These two molecules here, if we just change one stereocyte, say for example changing this R to the S configuration, or changing this S to the R configuration while leaving the other one the same, they are not enantiomers of each other. Remember, anything that is not an enantiomer of each other is a diastereomer. Keep that rule in mind because they can only be considered enantiomers or diastereomers. Are they not an enantiomer? Will therefore by default be a diastereomer. So with our reference molecule here, we have two pairs of enantiomers, two pairs of diastereomers, for a total of four stereoisomers. Again, that's confirmed by the two, N, two to the N rule here, and then the relationships, enantiomers and diastereomers are confirmed because we have the complete opposite of this molecule here is the enantiomer, and then changing just one stereocyte leads us to the diastereomer. All right, so with stereochemistry here, we have rules of chirality, so keep that in mind. What actually designates if it's going to be a chiral or achiral site? We also have certain stereocyte rules here, such that the symmetric center is achiral, asymmetric center is chiral, and again, that um, two to the n rule there to find the total number of stereoisomers, and again, just the contrast between structural and stereoisomers, and the relationship between enantiomers and diastereomers. That's the basic overview of stereochemistry. Um, I hope you enjoyed both parts. And uh, I love Orgo, and you can too. Thank you for tuning in.